Where was I? That's right, continuity and load testing. So let's say we've got this light bulb. It's just a standard 12 volt light bulb, pulls about an amp and a half. We want to turn it on and off. And we want to use this push button, which has been built into this little convenient handheld firing button case. So we're going to call that a firing button. We want to use that firing button switch to turn that light bulb on and off. Now, how can we be sure that that switch will do the job? What if there's one light bulb? What if there's five light bulbs? What if there's 10 light bulbs? How can we be sure that switches up to the task? Well, that is what continuity and load testing is all about. Let's get into it. First thing we can check is continuity. Most multimeters will have a function on their dial that allows you to do this pretty simply. You just connect your two wire leads to the test leads coming off the multimeter. Make sure those all stay in place. Press and hold the button and you hear your audible tone telling you that your circuit is complete. Let go, turns off, press it, turns on. Great. The other way that you could test continuity was a little device like this. This is a DSL made by Wizard Devices, sold by Roger George. This is similar in fashion, but instead of making a sound, it turns on a small red LED to let you know that you have a complete circuit. Same idea, slightly different application. Either way, these two devices let you know that when you press the button, you have a complete circuit. However, it doesn't tell you how good that circuit is. It merely lets you know that it's complete. So I've got, I don't know if you can see, a single strand of wire that I pulled out of a larger conductor. Now you take the single strand of wire and go across the terminals on the DSL. You get your red light, just the same. You go back to your test leads from your multimeter. This thing is hard to handle. Whoop! See what I mean? And you get your good continuity check. It's kind of annoying. So when you get a positive continuity check, all that tells you is that you do have some connection, but you don't know how good that connection is. It could be as nimble as this. It could even be thinner. So how do you know if your electrical connection is robust enough to handle what you want to do with it? Well, that's where load testing comes in. So we'll do that next. We're going to need a battery and we're going to need something that actually pulls power. For a power source, we're going to use this. This is a 1224 battery box built into this nice Pelican case. Inside of this panel, there are two 12 volt batteries, lead acid batteries, wired such that when you flip the switch up, you get 12 volts coming out. When you flip it down, you get 24. Now that's a nominal 12 and 24, so that's why the voltage is a little bit higher, but you get the idea. And then this key switch here turns this output terminal on and off. So right now nothing's coming out. Turn that switch on, red light there. That means you have 12 volts present at those two terminals. We'll be using this box to do the rest of our load testing. We've used our meter, we've used the DSL, we've checked our firing button and we have continuity. We don't know how good that continuity is. We just know that it's a complete circuit. We're not sure how robust it is. In order to check that, we need to actually put electrical power through it. We could just start with this one light bulb. It's a 12 volt, 1.4 amp bulb, but we can go bigger than that. We can have more fun than that. What we have here, this little awkward contraption, is we've got nine of those, you can see, there's nine of those bulbs built into this bank. And it's wired such that you can either go in through these individual terminals and light up one bulb at a, at a time, or you could wire to these terminals here to light up all the bulbs. Well, as many as you want. You can control these switches here, but the power is either directed through this terminal or through that terminal. So we're gonna use this box and that button and that battery, and we're gonna test our firing button and actually turn on some light bulbs. Let's do it. Now we've wired our circuit so that we go from our box, through our button, into this bank, whoop, into this bank of nine bulbs. So let's turn our circuit on and let's see what happens when we press the button. Wow, look at that. Those definitely all turn on. That's fantastic. And that's telling us that this switch is capable of handling that power. Now remember that continuity check we did where we had a single strand of wire? Let's see how that holds up under these same conditions.
So now, I've t I don't know if you can quite see that, but I've taken that single strand of wire and ran it from the battery terminal into our circuit. So now, all the power passing through this switch and through those bulbs is gonna have to go through that tiny connection. That tiny connection that passed our continuity test earlier. Let's see how this holds up. Okay, battery's on, switch is on. Let's see if it turns the light bulbs on. Hey, it does. Whoa, see that? So, so much power, current, was flowing through this circuit that it overheated this tiny little thin wire to the point that it turned bright red for a moment and then burned up and disappeared. And we lost our connection. So even though this tiny strand of wire passed our continuity test, under the load test, it failed. Now this is an extreme example. You're probably not gonna have a situation like this where your entire circuit is held on by such a tiny connection. But it's an example of the sort of things you should be looking for and the sort of things you can find with a load test. Now let's set this up a little bit differently and show what happens if you've got a high resistance connection within your circuitry, which is much more likely and is less flashy. We've rearranged our circuit here a bit. We've added a one ohm resistor in line with our switch. So the power goes out of the battery box through this one ohm resistor, through our switch, and then to the nine bulbs in this box. So this one ohm resistor is representing a bad connection, a loose wire, a loose terminal, an oxidized connection, maybe some component within the switch that's gone bad that's hard to detect because it passed our continuity check. So, Let's turn our circuit on, and now let's see what happens. I don't know if you can see that, but those bulbs are just ever so gently starting to glow. There's so much resistance to that one spot that not enough voltage is flowing to those bulbs to actually illuminate them. Oh, and it's starting to smell. That's great. So that right there is a great example of the sort of thing you're looking for under a low test to know that there's some prob problem, problem with your circuitry. Before we press the button, all nine bulbs came on quickly, stayed on. Now we press the button, big trouble. The other device I want to show you is this little handheld tester, which is similar in concept to this larger box, but instead of having nine separate circuits, it's only a single circuit. It's one bulb inside of there that pulls a tremendous amount of power for such a tiny little bulb. It pulls about five amps when you're running it at 12 volts, about seven amps when at 24 volts. It does the same thing, allows you to load test with just a press of a button. So if this is wired directly to our battery at 12 volts, turn the key switch on, that light turns on and turns on bright. Now, let's go ahead and put our switch in line and do the same thing. We have our switch now wired into our load tester. It's gonna be a little bit of a dance because I gotta press two buttons at once, but I've done worse. So, press and hold that. Now, when we press our firing button, that light comes on quick, stays bright, looks great. Once again, feeling confident that this switch is robust, this switch can handle the power. Now let's once again just set up a simulation of what a bad connection would, would look like. I'm gonna use another one of these little clunky resistors. This one's a two ohm resistor. Uh, turn that off. All right, over there. These are only 10 watt resistors, so I can't run them for too long without burning them up, but you get the idea. Okie dokie. So now we've gone ahead and we've added a two ohm resistor in line with our circuit in order to simulate a bad connection, a loose connection, a bad terminal, a corroded contact, any of those kind of conditions that will that could cause a fault within our circuitry. The sort of stuff we're trying to troubleshoot and diagnose and pinpoint with this load tester. So let's turn our battery on, 12 volt, as before. Now this time when we press the button, 
we get a very delayed response in that bulb and a very dim bulb compared to what we had earlier, which tells us something's wrong. We've got a different response and we went directly into our battery so that we know something in our circuit's not happy. We take that as a chance to go through our circuit, check our contacts, maybe even check our button to figure out the source of the problem before you take it out in the field. You don't want to be out in the field trying to turn something on to find out that your button's no good. So what I recommend, get yourself a load tester, build a load tester, steal a load tester, whatever you got to do. Acquire a load tester, something like this, something like that, any combination thereof, so that you can check your equipment on the bench in the shop before you actually need it on the day. Continuity test can only get you so far. If you want to learn what's really going on, get a load tester. Always turn your battery off. Well, there it is, our very first video trying to unravel the black magic that is electrical circuitry. I'm recording this outro having already edited together the video and I realized just from watching through it once that there are a lot of concepts that I just glanced right over. A lot of things that probably deserve their own sort of specific deep dive video. So just to let you know that if you've got questions about load testing batteries or the difference between volts and amps, Voltage drop, line loss, conductor sizes, Wagos, uh, what is common, what is positive, what is hot, what is neutral, what do all these things mean in a DC system versus an AC system? What does that even mean? All of it's on our radar, all of it's coming up soon. So let us know in the comments section what you thought about this one and do hit like and do hit subscribe so that we can keep making these and put out one more video. Stay tuned and stay busy and stay safe.